Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Ethel Barrymore in Edna Ferber's April 25th as usual on the Hallmark Playhouse. Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of another story by an author whose works have proved especially popular on our Hallmark Playhouse. She is Edna Ferber, and her keen-witted and warm-hearted pictures of American life have given her a high reputation among writers. Our choice has the teasing title, April 25th as usual, and also as usual from this author, it handles its theme with charm and virtuosity. This makes it especially appropriate that our star tonight is none other than an actress whose own charm and virtuosity have placed her on a pinnacle, not only in our hearts, but in the history of our time. Miss Ethel Barrymore, a great name and a great lady of a great family. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of April 25th as usual, starring Ethel Barrymore. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back. Well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting April 25th as usual, starring Ethel Barrymore. Mrs. Hosea C. Brewster of Winnebago, Wisconsin, always cleaned house in September and April. She started with the attic and worked her purifying path down to the cellar in strict accordance with the unwritten rules for house cleaning. For 25 years, she'd done it. For 25 years, with towels swathed around her head, she had hated it, being an intelligent woman. Now, don't gather from this that Millie Brewster was an ample, pie-baking, gingham old soul who wore a crushed-looking hat with a palsied rose on top of it. She wasn't. But September had rolled around and Millie Brewster was at it again. Miss Mers, I don't know how one attic can hold so many things. Well, that's easy, Miss Brewster. You put them there. I put them there? Why, it's just impossible for one person to have collected so many assorted trunk loads of doodads. <laughs> you call them doodads, Miss Brewster. I call them junk. Junk? Miss Mers, do you think I collect junk? Oh, I've been helping you clean house now since the year you were married to Mr. Hosea. That's when you first started and you ain't stopped since. When are you going to begin throwing some of it away? I guess maybe you're right, Miss Mertz. It does seem sort of silly, doesn't it? But oh well. Once and for all, I'm going to make up my mind to plow through these doodads. <laughs> Why the hilarity? <laughs> I'm laughing up my sleeve. You said the same thing last year and the year before that. Miss Mary, suppose you go on and help Gussie with the downstairs. Uh-huh. You said the same thing last year and the year before that. And, and don't forget your broom. <laughs> you said that last year, too, and the year before that. <laughs> well, I'll show you, Miss Mertz. When I get through with this attic, there won't be a trunk left. <laughs> maybe not even the attic. You think I'm an old sentimental fool, don't you? Well, maybe you're right. Just look at this mess of old theater programs. January 21st, 1923, 27 years ago, and this press rose. Hosea gave me that corsage. Tonight I'll never forget. We were in New York, and Martins took us back to meet Billy Burke. Oh, she was beautiful and so wonderful. And Hosea said she couldn't hold a candle to me. This is silly. Maybe I'll just keep this one program and throw the rest out. Yes. 
Oh, for heaven's sake, here's one that starred Victor Moore. I couldn't throw that away. Oh, I don't have time to go through these all. Guess I'll keep the whole pile. Get rid of them some other day. Well, of all things, the little plaid dress Peggy wore when she was seven. Peggy at seven, all golden curls and dimples, saucy and paired with an ice cream soda with whipped cream. Still that way, even if she has grown up, a successful artist in New York. Think I'm going to throw that dress out, Miss Murd's not on your life. <laughs> now, here's something I should have got rid of years ago. If there's anything as unfashionable as last season's hat, I'd like to know what it is. Yes, into the trash pile you go. Oh, no. I was married in that hat. Oh, well. How much space does a little hat take, anyway? Gracious, do I still have this thing? The costume I wore when I played Juliet. We went in Bago Little Theatre. Juliet. And Hosea was Romeo. Romeo, Romeo, doth thy name. And for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. Golly, it's been three hours since I started to clean this attic. There must be something I can throw out. Mommy! Mommy, darling. Peggy! Peggy, where is my baby? You put down that silly old dress, Mommy. Oh, we didn't get your telegram. Did you? No, I didn't send one. I just thought I'd surprise you. Well, don't look so dazed, Mommy. Look at you, you're all smudged, house clean. Of course, darling, this is September. Last time you were here in June. But you ought to know what happens in September. House cleaning. <laughs> Mother, you know I'd forgotten. Still happens twice a year, September and April. The furniture gets moved onto the porch, woolen's out on the line, mattresses in the yard. Everything can be pounded, beaten, whisked, rubbed, flapped, shaken, aired, is dragged out, and then it's dragged in again. <laughs> well, I don't think it's anything to laugh about. I think it's positively barbaric, medieval, slavery. Well, if I'd known you were coming, come here to the window. Let me see you. Is that the kind of hat they're wearing? Why, it's a winter one, isn't it, already? You know me, I just got used to the angle of my summer one. Now, you stop stalling, Mommy. Do you like cleaning the attic? No, I hate it. Well, then why in the world do you do oh, it? Oh, I've always done it, Peggy. Oh, while they may not be wearing attics in New York, we haven't taken them off in Winnebago. Come on down to the kitchen. Oh, Peggy, you'll hate the dinner. Built around Miss Mertz, you know, boiled. Well, you know what a despot she is. <laughs> Mommy, is it boiled? Honestly, on a hot day like this. With onions. <laughs> oh, M Miss Brewster. Yes, Miss Brewster. Yeah, I, I found a moth in Mr. Brewster's winter flannels. What shall I do with it? Choke it to death, Miss Mertz. <laughs> and don't you dare touch any of my doodads in this attic after I leave. <laughs> I want to talk to you about Mother. Mm -hmm. She... She isn't well. What do you mean, isn't well? well Mother? You, you and she ought to go away this winter, not just for a trip, but to stay. You ought to give up the house. Give up the house? Well, Mother's worn out, I tell you. It, it isn't as if she were the old-fashioned kind. She isn't. She loves the theaters and beautiful clothes and... Lobsters and concerts. Oh, sure, sure. She likes them for a change, but for a steady diet. You've no. got used to this great barracks, and you don't know how unhappy it's making you. Why, Mother said today that she hated it. I asked about the attic, the cleaning and all, and she said she hated it. Did she say that, Peggy? Yes. I never realized. I know, Daddy, and maybe it's time you did. <laughs> kitchen, Peggy. Then it'll be ready in a few minutes. Well, I'm really not very hungry, Mom. Oh, Mom. Oh, you darling. No boiled dinner. Mm. Your wonderful toast salad and cheese souffle. It's your coffee. How'd you ever manage it? You know there's always lots to eat in this house. Big house, big kitchen, big frigidaire, big amounts of food, and also big responsibilities. Mommy, I 
want to talk to you. Yes, Peggy? Mother, I don't think Daddy's well. He ought to go away. What do you mean, Peggy? Father, but he isn't sick. Well, not sick exactly, but sort of worn out. This big house is killing both of you. Why don't you close it up or sell it? Come to New York and meet new men and women. Live, you're in a rut, both of you. Mom, get yourself settled and forget this place. Father hates it, I know it. Peggy, did he ever say so? Well, practically, he... You see, he thinks you're fond of it and he wouldn't want to hurt your feelings, but... Oh, Mommy, he looks so tired and old and... Daddy's only 58. 57. <laughs> well, Mommy, dear... I don't know, Peggy. I never dreamed Hosea felt like that. And, of course, he should take it easy. Yes, he should take it easy. Well, we're all here together in New York. It's wonderful. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, baby, wonderful. No more small towns and big houses for us. We're city people now. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous, Mom, Dad? Oh, sure, yeah. Isn't this a perfect dream of an apartment? Don't you just love it? Well, it is rather nice. Compact. Well, that's it. Compact. No unnecessary corners to collect dust and stuff. You're... You're not disappointed, are you? No, darling. It's just that, well, the rent's so high. At that price, I thought the furniture would be solid gold inlaid with rubies and picked out with diamonds. Yes, it looks more like it was picked out at the dime store. <laughs> Daddy, you're going to adore it, I know. Where's the kitchen, Peggy? You'll never get right behind this screen, see? Why, the whole thing would be lost in one corner of my china closet. <laughs> well, it's big enough. This tiny gas range will cook steaks, chop roasts, and it'll be more like play than work. Where's the refrigerator? Mother, you're leaning your elbow right on it. Small, isn't it? <laughs> Why is the ceiling so high? I feel as if I was standing at the bottom of a well. <laughs> That's because this is a studio apartment. The bedroom's upstairs. You even have your own balcony. Mm. Balcony. Say, this is your first night here in the apartment, and we're going to have our own opening night. Mr. and Mrs. Brewster, for years I've listened how on one very memorable occasion you played Romeo and Juliet for the Winnebago Little Theatre. Well, there's your balcony. This is a command performance. Let the play begin. Oh, no. No, you don't. Romeo? Well, I'm ready. What are we waiting for, Millie? Well, all right. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you, Jose. The play is about to begin. Millie. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more? Shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. What's it a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not a Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owns without that title. Romeo, doth thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. <laughs> Just a moment, we'll return to the second act of April 25th, as usual, starring Ethel Barrymore. You know, when you buy greeting cards, they are never for yourself. You buy them only for others. You buy them to carry your friendliness, your sympathy, or appreciation, or affection to other people. This is why the makers of Hallmark cards consider the words on every greeting card so very important. They are aware there is no magic like the magic of words to reach the hearts of others. What power words have to deepen the affection of those you care for, to heighten their happiness on festive occasions, to comfort them in sorrow, to strengthen ties of friendship, and what power words have to make new friends. For every person, for every occasion, 
you will find Hallmark cards to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And every Hallmark card will speak also of your own good taste by its perfection in every detail of color and design and craftsmanship. That's why I'm sure if you were to ask any group of friends what name they think of in greeting cards when they want to send the very best, they will quickly answer, Hallmark Cards. So it is easy to remember, it would be difficult to forget, to look for that Hallmark on the back of every card you choose, because you care enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of April 25th as usual, starring Ethel Barrymore. <laughs> for Mr. and Mrs. Hosea C. Brewster of Winnebago, Wisconsin had begun, for now they were New Yorkers. But after Peggy had left them that first night in their cozy little two-room studio apartment, there came upon them a feeling of desolation and vastness and a terrible loneliness such as they'd never dreamed of in the great 12-roomed house in Winnebago. This they tried to cover up by feigning a lightheartedness that neither of them felt. It was 2 a.m., and though they'd retired, the rhythm of New York still beat it out eight to the bar. Sleeping, Roger? No, not yet. Just dozing off. It's the strange beds, I guess. Oh, this is going to be great, though. Great. My, my, yes. We should have done this years ago. We were a couple of old fools tying ourselves down, as we did. No more furnaces for me. Yes, and I'm through with cleaning the big house forever. You won't miss Winnebago, will you, Hosea? Oh, gosh, no. I guess it's a nice enough place, but here in New York, we can really begin to live. I mean, enjoy our lives. Yeah, yeah, this is the life, all right. Mm. We'll be known as those gay Brewsters, habitués of cafe society. <laughs> oh, Hosea, well, that'd be wonderful. At our age, if we must get into a rut, it might as well be a lively one. It'd be a noisy one, at any rate. Mm. Just listen to that piano. Do you think you could sleep without fresh air tonight? We're New Yorkers now, Hosea. We might as well get used to New York sounds. It isn't like Winnebago when folks when folks go to bed early and there's just the rustling of leaves and Well, it's quiet there at night. It isn't here. I, I kind of like it. We, we we can never get lonesome with all that activity going on around us. I agree with you. Well, good night, Millie. Good night, Jose. What a question to ask, Jose. Just imagine our Peggy giving a Christmas party especially for us. Well, why not? We gave her a party every year until she was 18. This is so exciting. Just look at all those smart-looking New York women. It's easy to tell where they're from. Is that so? Millie, they're all from the Midwest. <laughs> as far as I can make out, there's only one real New Yorker in the whole caboodle of them. Oh, which one is that? That kind of plain one over there. Sensible looking with the blue suit. I'd like to talk to her, Hosea. Take me over. Well, just go on over and introduce yourself, Millie. Make believe you're sophisticated. Oh, that isn't the way it's done in Winnebago. Oh, you're in New York now. Go on over. All right, but I know I'm doing the wrong thing. I... I beg your pardon. I, I'm Millie Brewster, you know. Peggy's mother. Well, that's very interesting, Mrs. Brewster. I'm Alice Brewer. Oh, Peggy's told me so much about you that I'd, I'd have known who you are even if you hadn't introduced yourself. Really? That's very decent of her. Um, Mrs. Brewster, I don't want to be rude, but um, I don't know any Peggy. Oh, well, Peggy's my daughter, and she's the hostess here. Surely you must know her because she invited you here. Oh, no, she didn't. In New York, you don't need an invitation. You just... Uh, Drop in with a friend. Oh, certainly doesn't happen that way in Winnebago. Mrs. Brewster, just where is Winnebago? It's in Wisconsin. Oh. Quite a beautiful city. 
And the people there are friendly and wholesome. That sounds just like the place I live in. Well, New York is mighty fine, and there are interesting people. I, I don't blame you for living here. But I don't live here. I was born here, but I live in Connecticut. Oh. You see, um, you Wisconsin people have crowded us out of New York. No breathing space. I love New York, but I don't know how I could live in it. Have you ever tried a studio apartment with a kitchenette? <laughs> my dear, there's one corner of my soul that's still wrinkled from the crushing. That deceitful lying kitchen. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I've met people like you from Wisconsin before. I like them. Particularly when they pretend they're in love with life in New York. They're such wonderful liars. <laughs> oh, uh, forgive me, Mrs. Brewster, my friend is calling me. Stay happy. You bet I will. January, Miss Brewster. You know, it's mighty decent you to stop to speak to me all the time. Just a doorman. Well, Jerry, you're a friend. You're like home folks. I count it a blessing that you talk to me. It is lonesome in New York, isn't it? Have you noticed it, too? I sure have. Well, there are times when thoughts of home kind of creep up on you, but... <clears throat> well, Jerry, as far as I'm concerned, I think New York is a mighty fine place. much of a dinner. I didn't have time to shop. Well, you ought to be cooking around like this anyway, Millie. I'll tell you what, we'll eat out tomorrow night somewhere and go to a show. Don't you think maybe we ought to stay home one night? Well, you get a big kick out of the theater, don't you? I should say I do, Father. That chop you're eating, small, isn't it? Tastes good for February. Besides, I never had a big appetite anyway. Now, Hosea, since when? Ever since I came to New York. I've never felt so wonderful. Feel my stomach. It's as hard as a rock. <laughs> You're enjoying it here, aren't you, Hosea? It's the life, Mother. It's the life. It's March, March, March. Peggy, the prices they ask for hats here. I'm not going to buy one till I get back to Winnebago. Mother! Are you thinking of going back home? To a bigger one. What makes you say that? Mommy. Mommy, aren't you happy here? Why, what a question to ask. I just love it here. Why are you wearing that white towel around your head? And why are these chairs, tables, and rugs pushed into a heap? Well, I, I was cleaning house. It, it's April. Millie, and that's just the thing you came here to get away from. Well, I, I didn't mean to, Father. When I got up this morning, there was a letter, a letter from the woman who owns this apartment. She asked if I'd go to the hall closet, the one she reserved for her own things, you know, and unlock it and get out a box she told me about and have the hall boy express it to her. And I did, and... And this is the result. Oh, no. I... I don't know. It, it made me... Well, not homesick, Jose. Not, not homesick, exactly. But there in the little closet were boxes crammed full of doodads. And it just set me to thinking... Mother... Mother, let's stop fooling each other. Let's go home. When? Now. But Jose, Peggy, this flat. The lease runs until June. Now. Unless you want to stay. Unless you like it here in this, this make-believe, double-barrel, duplex, do-funny of a studio thing. Let's go home, Mother. Yes, Jose. Let's go home and, and breathe. Oh, 
home. Welcome home. Oh, Millie, Millie. Isn't it wonderful how big the house looks? Huge. I should say. Now I know how a jack-in-the-box feels when the lid's open. No wonder it grins and throws out its arms. Let's never leave this house again, Hosea. Let's never leave our friends here again. It won't happen, Millie. It'll never happen. Hosea, no more small chops for you. I've ordered the biggest steak Mr. Henkel had in this shop for tonight. And tomorrow, what a surprise you're going to get. Miss Brewster? Why, hello, Miss Mertz. Sure good to see you. Thank you. Miss Brewster, I'm saving time for you at the end of the month for April cleaning. Why, of course, Miss Mertz. April 25th, as usual. April 25th, as, as usual. <laughs> James Hilton will return in a moment. February is the month of famous birthdays, Lincolns and Washingtons. We all remember their birthdays, but how many of us remember the birthdays of our own friends? Yet when someone sends us birthday cards, how delighted we are. I can't think of any gesture that brings more appreciation, and it's so easy if you know about the wonderful collection of birthday greetings at the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. For there are all types of Hallmark birthday cards, Clever ones to make your friends laugh at the years. Warm affection and messages for those you love. Novel cards to thrill the children. Sincere greetings to delight anyone of any age. Why don't you do this tomorrow? Make a list of friends and loved ones who have birthdays this month or in March or April. Then choose a Hallmark birthday card for each. Just what you want to say the way you want to say it. And that Hallmark on the back will carry added meaning. For it says you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Ethel Barrymore. We are indeed honored to have you with <coughs> us tonight. Your magnificent acting has made this a great event on our Hallmark Playhouse. It's a fine story, Mr. I'm <coughs> glad to hear you say that, Miss Barrymore, because it's the sort of story we always like to find, one that deepens our appreciation of everyday living. I think tonight's play has given us all a fresh realization of what friendliness means. That makes it especially appropriate for Hallmark Playhouse. It is the friendly tradition that has made Hallmark cars such favorites. I hear you're having the autobiography of a very wonderful person next week, Mr. Hilton. Yes, Miss Barrymore. Next week, we're presenting for the first time on the air a special radio adaptation of the autobiography of Will Rogers. This is one of today's bestsellers, as well it should be, being the story of one of the great Americans of this century. Also, Miss Barrymore, we are especially proud that we shall have with us on our Hallmark Playhouse then Edward Arnold and Will Rogers, Jr. This sounds like a memorable occasion, Mr. Hilton. We're certainly looking forward to it, Miss Barrymore. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Ethel Barrymore appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Key to the City, starring Clark Gable, Loretta Young, Frank Morgan, and Marilyn Maxwell. The part of Hosea Brewster on tonight's show was played by Tom Tully. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present the autobiography of Will Rogers, edited by Donald Day, when our star will be Edward Arnold, who will tell you the story, with Will Rogers Jr. portraying the part of his illustrious father. And the week following, the indestructible Julia, starring Katina Paxinou. And the week after that, Alfred Leland Crabbe's Home to the Heritage on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.